So the first thing you want to do before we start is just make sure that you've got the inside done correctly by folding it out and making sure that everything is right side up. And while I'm going through these notes, I'm expecting you to take the notes along with me. You should have your highlighter ready first. I'm not sure why I'm seeing glue or scissors or anything other than a highlighter, a color pencil, ready for notes. Okay, we're going to start off with what you probably learned first, which is an equal sign. If you open it up, you can read the meaning is equals to. An example of this could be x is equal to 3. We're going to do a real quick graph here. Whenever we're graphing these, we don't have to make a giant graph. We just want to make sure that the number that we're graphing is on the graph. If it is equal to three, that means I'm going to fill in the dot just for the three. Our next symbol is less than. When you open it up, you can see that it says the meaning is less than. An example in this case, the X is less than negative one. Again, I don't need to be ultra detailed with my graph, but I want to act like I'm zooming in on the part of the graph where the number that is in my inequality is listed. When it's less than, we circle it. It is not less than or equal to, it's just less than. So the number negative one is not included in the set of numbers. Everything to the left of it is. So we're gonna highlight the line and show it's going left. Because all numbers to the left of what we just circled makes this true. Next up, the meaning is less than or equal to. So let's underline that and then title the outside of its flap. Less than or equal to. Before we open this up, I want you to notice that all three symbols we have on here are related. This equal sign, part of it is in this line here. The less than sign is right here. This symbol is a combination of these two symbols. Do we see it now? So since that's true, let's open this up for all of them so we can see. Our example is gonna be x is less than or equal to five.
again, I'm zooming in on my graph. I need to make sure that the five is there, but I don't need to put one, two, three, four all the way up to it. It's less than or equal to five, so I'm going to circle the five, but because it also says or equal to, what am I going to do with the circle? Okay. I'm going to fill it in because the five could also be one of the numbers, and then the arrow goes to the left. next one, the meaning is greater than. So what's going to happen to our symbol? It's going to reverse. It's going to reverse. For my example, I'm going to put x is greater than 0. case it's going to be greater than zero so I'm circling it is it including the zero in this answer it's everything to the right of it this time The next one, the meaning is greater than or equal to. So what are we going to do with it? We're going to combine the greater than symbol and the equal symbol into a new symbol for greater than or equal to. I'm going to say for this one, our x is greater than or equal to negative 10. What numbers surround negative 10? Uh, negative 9, negative Yep. That's all I need to put. Picture zooming in, you're using that magnifying glass to zoom in on the number line. I just need to surround the number with numbers that go with it. I'm going to circle the negative 10, and what am I doing with the circle? And the arrow goes to the right. Our final symbol is not equal to. If it's not equal to, I'm going to start with the same symbol we started at the top and put a slash through it. My example I'm going to write is x is not equal to 2. So that is true, what you just heard us on a say. Any other number except for 2 would make this a true statement, yes? Any other number is going to be able to be put in for that x, but how would we show that on a graph? We're going to go to the right and the left.
but the circle is not filled in because we're basically saying every other number that exists in the world except two works. I know, two's kind of left out here. Okay, usually I will have us glue things to the backs of pages, but I have learned over time making these notebooks that gluing things with flaps to a back page is a, not a good idea. Here was the last thing we glued into our notebooks. This is still loose, we're not using it today. I'm gonna turn this page. And I'm gonna glue this here. Before I do though, I want you to title it Graphene Solutions. You want to put the title at the top of the page and then you're going to glue this underneath it. So it looks like that. It barely fits, so you have to put the title pretty close to the top of the page. Graphene Solutions. 